The Functions of Art Art and Beauty Art creates beauty. Arts and beauty have long intertwined. It can add beauty to our lives, although beauty is a cultural creation. Standards of beauty in and of themselves are by no means universal. The classical Greeks were obsessed with their idea of beauty and fashioned mathematical formulas for rendering the human body in sculpture so that it would achieve a majesty and perfection. Like the question, what is art? Concepts of beauty are not universal. The idea of beauty shifts and evolves within different cultures. In many cultures, tattooing and body adornment marks beauty. Some non-Western societies hold scarification to be both beautiful and sacred. Non-Western ideas of beauty may seem odd and unattractive to their ideas. When we compare two females from different times and cultures, we may begin to understand that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and that eye is trained and heavily influenced by the culture and society one lives within. The 16th century Italian Renaissance painter Leonardo da Vinci painted a vision of beauty that is possibly the most famous painting in the world. Yet the ideal beauty of the Mona Lisa is based on a Western standard. Elsewhere in the world, the Mona Lisa's features might seem alien, unattractive or undesirable. As they may well be to the Maasai woman on your right, we can see in the photograph of the young Kenyan woman from the Maasai tribe that she is adorned with beaded jewellery, cropped hair and painted face a contrast to the Mona Lisa who has long flowing hair and unembellished skin. While beauty is in the eye of the beholder, we must remember that art does not have to be beautiful. Art and our environment Art enhances our environment. Works of art have been used to create pleasing environments for centuries. Artwork finds its way into our everyday places, Sculpture decorates yards and gardens in our cities and homes and turns our otherwise ordinary environments into more pleasurable places. Whatever other functions art may serve, many works of art are also decorative. For example, Del Chihuly's ceiling called Flori di Como, which is made of glass, embellishes the reception area of the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas, which many of you have probably seen firsthand. It is a 70-foot-long ceiling piece that is suspended above the reception area. The visitor must pass under the work to register at the hotel. It appears as if you are looking up through the sea at colourful floating jellyfish. Each piece is individually hand-blown. Likewise, the work by Joyce Kozlov's Gala Placidia in Philadelphia is a mosaic from the Penn Center Suburban Station in Philadelphia. It provides a decorative interest to an otherwise dull and uninteresting area. The original mausoleum of Gala Placidia is the 5th century chapel and burial place of a Byzantine empress, a landmark monument known for its complex and colourful mosaics. We can compare the first Gala Placidia with Kozlov's work. What do you think? While she was inspired by the original, she has added her own interpretation. Nonetheless, her work is intricate and the diverse mosaic designs dazzle the eye and stimulate the intellect, while providing an oasis of colour in an otherwise monotonous city scene. Art and Truth Art reveals truth. It can provide an accurate representation of the physical world. Art can also reveal truths about the artist, as we can see in these two works of art. In Robert Maplethorpe's self-portrait, he discloses the truth about his inevitable death from AIDS. He meets the viewer's gaze and holds the cane with the skull tightly, while looking out at us with a pained expression, yet in the face of certain death he appears pained but confident. He's telling us something with his gaze and clenched fist. He's saying death is near, death is inevitable, and within a year of this portrait, he was dead. We can see that Mexican painter Frida Kahlo, in her self-portrait, Diego in My Thoughts, 
is revealing something about her inner thoughts. She was badly injured at the age of 18 when a car slammed into a bus on which she was travelling. The accident left her with serious injuries and a lifetime of physical and mental pain. Because of the severe injuries, she was never able to have children and suffered numerous miscarriages. She was married to painter Diego Rivera, which she described as painful. She is quoted as saying that she suffered two serious accidents in her life, one in which a streetcar ran over her and the other, she said, was Diego. In this portrait, she painted her face realistically and set within her thoughts is a portrait of Diego with a third eye. In Hinduism and Buddhism, the third eye is a symbol of enlightenment and wisdom. We also see that she is crying, and if we look closely, we see one teardrop emerging from Diego's left eye. Her hair is wrapped around her neck as if it is strangling her. So what truth is she revealing? One can say, knowing that Diego caused her pain with his many infidelities, that she is consumed by thoughts of him, and that he is fully aware of the pain he has caused her since he has a third eye and therefore enlightened to the truth. Of course, other interpretations could be made, but clearly Callow is revealing truth about pain and suffering that has been caused by Diego. Art and Immortality Art immortalizes. Human beings, as we know so far, are the only species conscious of death, and for millennia we have used art to overlap the limits of our lives. Art can keep a person and events alive in the public's consciousness for decades. During the 1950s, Marilyn Monroe was the epitome of feminine beauty. Here we see a silkscreen of Monroe called The Four Marilyns multiplied by four, done by pop artist Andy Warhol. Pop art impels us to cast a more critical eye on the symbols of objects with which we surround ourselves. So when Warhol created the four Marilyns in the weeks following the movie star's death in August 1962, he was trying to tell us something more than what the publicity photo showed. He was trying to reveal that the public did not know the real Norma Jean Baker. His work also sheds light on our consumer culture. Rather, all the viewer knows and sees is a mask, a persona, the Hollywood myth of Marilyn Monroe. He has arranged her lined up in multiples, which suggests that he was commenting on the way in which she has been packaged and sold during her life as well as in death. The repetition of Monroe's face reinforces her status as a consumer product. She remains a consumer product even today, as many objects from posters, books and handbags containing her image can be found in numerous shops. Judy Chicago immortalizes many women in her work, The Dinner Party. A pioneer of feminist art movement, Chicago is one of the most influential artists of our time. Her monumental installation, The Dinner Party, has become an icon of the 20th century. The dinner party was executed with the help of hundreds of women and several men. Arranged around a triangular table are 39 place settings, each one created in honour of an individual woman, such as the Egyptian ruler Het Hepsut, artist Georgia O'Keeffe, and novelists Virginia Woolf and Emily Dickinson. The names of an additional 999 important women are written on the porcelain tiled floor. By using such craft techniques as ceramics, weaving, needlepoint and embroidery, Chicago demanded artistic equality for occupations that had long been considered women's work. In a future lecture, we will discuss the differences between craft and art. Confined to the domestic sphere, the vast majority of women throughout history had been limited to these so-called craft expressive outlets and the dinner party honours them. The 13 places on each side of the triangle intentionally invoke the seating arrangement of Leonardo's Last Supper, a central work in the history of Western art, and one that depicts an all-male gathering. 
Chicago herself describes the work as a symbolic history of women in Western civilizations. The idea of this multimedia work, which is constructed to honor and immortalize history's notable women, is designed to reflect their personalities and accomplishments. Everything about the work symbolizes women, even the ancient symbol for women, the triangle. And each ceramic plate, although different, is molded to represent the female genitalia. Through this work, Chicago has invested much energy in alerting the public to the significant role of women in arts and society, and has immortalized them.